Welcome to Fiber Chronicles. I am Bonnie and you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Ravelry as Fiber Chronicles. You can contact me at fiberchronicles on gmail.com and I also have an Etsy shop where I sell stitch markers and some knitted wire earrings and I hope to increase my inventory. I also have a few Procreate brushes for iPads. It's a Procreate is a program for doing graphic designs. Those are the ones my daughter put together and is selling through my shop. So if you happen to be doing that with scrapbooking and anything, you can check those out too. I am so glad that you are here. I have a couple of finished objects that I'd like to show you today. The first one I am very excited about. I did a test knit for Barbara of Knitting I Love for a shawl. The first shawl she designed, she did an excellent job. I love it. It was fun to knit. It is beautiful. Please try and look through the fold lines. They don't seem to want to just pull out for me right now. It is called Wild Blooms and it should be going up for sale on Ravelry in a, a couple of weeks, I would guess. The test knit goes through the 6th, I believe. It was just beautiful. We had a fun time knitting on the test knit group and it is reminiscent of flowers growing, tulips. Up here is what she modeled it after. I did add an extra section of the leaf motif because I did the large pattern. It comes in small, medium, and large. I did the large and I thought just having an extra set of leaves would have would make less garter stitch. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that the garter stitch would be overpowering. It only changed it like an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half down, uh, that would have, would not have made a difference. So I don't think that's needed at all. When I make my next one, which my sister has requested one, so I will be making another, then I'm not going to worry about adding the second leaf repeat. I, it just isn't necessary. It was so fun to knit because as you were going along, then you had these discoveries pop up in the pattern and it was just really nice to watch it and to be surprised by just how it looked when it when you finished that. And even though we had a picture of what it was going to look like, it was just very fun to knit as everything popped up beautifully. So I would advise you check that out once it's published and so that you can get it. it it's it's a lovely one. The yarn I used is a Mill Ends of 100% virgin wool. I had two 4 ounce skeins. I have one ounce left over, so I used 7 ounces, 420 yards approximately, and that comes out to 200 grams. So the large, you might be able to get it out of 200 grams. Um, but you'd have you might end up being a bit of yarn chicken. The medium and the small, I'm sure there are absolutely no problem getting it out of 200 grams of worsted weight yarn is what I used. It's actually a very large worsted, so I came up to, with gauge with only increasing my needle from a six to a seven, and I tend to knit tighter, and so I often have to do that. So I'm guessing it's actually more of a, an Aran than a worsted. And so it's pretty close. The pattern calls for Aran weight. The other finished object I have, I am making, I made for my niece's new baby girl. I asked what she would like. She said she would like to have a basic beanie and some booties for the winter time. So in a six month size, the baby was born a month ago, I think. And 
they live in Colorado of the United States, so it gets really cold there in the winter. I found a hat pattern that I thought had a very nice texture, and so it was not just plain, but it was there. She also wants me to put a flower on it. I haven't figured out, I haven't decided exactly which flower I'm going to use, but I will be finding a flower to put on it. I plan to make the flower so it can be removable and so that she doesn't have to wear it all the time. And I'm thinking about maybe making two or three. It's a beautiful texture on this hat, but the first hat I made, I'm pretty sure this is too big for a six month old. So I decreased stitches and made another one. This one should fit just great on a six month old and it still looks beautiful. The yarn I used is a worsted weight Encore by Plymouth Yarns. It is 75% acrylic, 25% wool, 100 grams, so 200 yards. I made these two hats. I figure I'll send both of them and so she can grow into the bigger one. Between the hats and the booties, which I will talk about in a moment, I had this much yarn left. I finished the booties last night. I have not wound this up neatly, so this is just the end of the skein, what ended up being left. I have second sock syndrome so bad, I knew that if I did booties one at a time, the second one would never get done. I know because I tried making booties for my daughter's baby, who is six months old now, and I never got two booties made, which is okay because she knits and, and she made a bunch of socks for her baby, no problem. I am okay doing two at a time magic loop and that's what I wanted to do, but I could not find a booty pattern that was two at a time magic loop. So I made one. I looked at the different patterns, looked at, there were some sock patterns out there and you know, booties aren't that much different from socks, but I wanted it to look more like a booty shape rather than a foot shape. So I had to develop my own pattern for two at a time booties. It took me at least six tries of doing this heel to try to get it so that it had the broken rib pattern all the way down the back and then kicked into the garter uh, sole and the stockinette down the sides and then but still having the patterning on the top. That was a lot of work with a lot of pulling back and redoing. So there, there was quite a bit there. This is what it looks like when it is stuffed. I stuffed it with one of my shorty socks folded up so that you'd be able to see it really well. How the stockinette works on the side to give it the side of the booty and to, that's what keeps it from looking like socks and makes it look more like booties. And it's also a little bit bigger and so that it will fit over socks if that's what's wanted. So I'm actually pretty happy with this. I'll be publishing this pattern on Ravelry when I get some more things done to it. Right now I have it really nice for this particular design, but I want to add options and make it like a mix and match type pattern. So I'll have be ha having a Pico cast on as an option, all stockinette, maybe some stockinette reverse garter on the top instead of the broken rib. Uh, I And maybe a cable. Well, I definitely plan on doing some kind of a cable design down the top and so that it can, it, so you could just have, pick what you want and how you want to do it. It was a fairly easy pattern to do once I figured it out and it, it just took a lot of figuring. So I'll be calling for test knitters once I get all all that stuff figured out and what options I want to add to the pattern. So I'd be glad to hear from you. If you want to be considered for that, let me know. That will probably happen within the next couple of weeks. The next finished object I have is not a knitted object, but a dyeing object. I decided to try 
some dyeing. It's something I'm actually interested in. I think it would be very fun. I want to get into doing some natural dyes or something as well, but just, just for fun. In the past, I showed this marled yarn that I thought was 100% wool. I did the burn test and it crumbled and flaked. It did not get a hard ball. So I thought it was 100% wool. It is a, It looks like natural wool. It has one strand of brown and two strands of cream or natural color. And this is what it looked like. It's a worsted. I bought it at a thrift store so I did not have labels for it. And this is not, I, I just don't use this natural color marled very much. Brown is not my thing. And so I decided I wanted to try it as a dyeing experiment. I actually had a little over 13 ounces, I think, maybe 13 and a half, which comes up to almost 400 grams. So I have quite a bit. I bought some Wilton's uh, royal blue icing coloring and decided I was going to go ahead and do some, try some dyeing. And I'd heard on the Wool Needles Hand podcast, I'd watched Taylor, she's the host of that podcast, she did a vlog type episode where she was seeing if she could use the sun to dye her yarn. Well, she lives in around Las Vegas, which is very hot. I live in Arizona, which is also very hot. So I, and it was coming up on some really hot days. I really wanted to get the yarn dyed. It was way too hot to be doing boiling things on the stovetop or having things, all that steam, hot steam in the house. So I didn't want to do it in the house. So I decided to try doing it outside and see what happened. Well, I did, and I wanted it a really dark royal blue. I, it's just such a beautiful color when it's really dark. This is what I got. I was trying to film as I went, and I was unsuccessful at actually getting it to work properly outside. I have a lot of pictures that are stills that just all look alike. It, was, it just wasn't changing. It wasn't pulling up. There was so much dye. I spent all day long or several hours outside and it wasn't, it, you know, it, it just got this. I brought it in. I decided to go ahead and break down and heat our home full of steam and extra heat, which was very miserable, but we did it anyway on the stovetop and it still didn't absorb anymore. So I actually don't, I don't think it absorbed any more dye inside than outside. I decided this obviously has some non-animal fiber in it. I'm guessing it must have some acrylic and it just didn't ball up when I did the heat test because it's only part acrylic and I don't know. But I was trying for a solid or just a slight tonal quality to the royal blue. I did not get that. I got, I got a semi-solid with teal to purples and it isn't the color I was looking for, but it is beautiful. And I have these in, in great big hanks because one of them is about four ounces, the, or one of them is about seven ounces, one is about six ounces. You can see that purple right there. That's really nice. I, I just really love it. And you can see it definitely picked up a lot of color, just not as much as I was hoping for. So I have to decide what I'm going to make with this. There should be a sweater quantity here. What I'm thinking I want is to have a, like a suit jacket or a professional type jacket of some kind, something I could wear in an office if I happen to work in an office. And so less sweater, 
more jacket type feel to it. Something that would fit my body shape. I have a, more of a pear shaped body and so I can't wear tunic length things without them looking awful on me. I have to do high hip. If you have any suggestions on nice looking professionals type jackets that will fit a large person, let me know. Worsted weight. I'd be happy to have for any suggestions. Please leave comments down below. Well, since I had so much dye left in the pot, I had other yarn that I had tried to use. But it was a pink and it was just not quite right. And everything I tried to use it for, I was just not happy with the way the color worked with the pattern that I was using. And I realized that it just wasn't the right pink and I was not going to be happy with it with that pink ever. So I decided to wind them up in loose hanks and drop them in the dye bath and see what would happen. And this is what I got. There's some tonal qualities here where it's more of a purple. It definitely darkened up the colors, but they are a better color now once I dyed, over dyed them. I'm happy with it. Most of the dye that came out when I washed it was the pink that it originally was. It hadn't been set properly by whomever dyed it in the first place. I'm guessing it might have been a dyeing experiment originally or something. I got it at a thrift store again. I'm happier with the color now than I was before, so it'll. I have to find out what I can make with this too. Other things I've been working on, I have been knitting some jewelry, some earrings. I'm wearing a pair of knitted wire I-cord earrings. So these are I-cord made out of wire. I have a couple pairs in the shop. This is my first pair. It is does not have a nice join and, and things. The findings are not that nice. The ones I have in the shop are much nicer, but they're basically the same. These are slightly bigger than the ones in the shop. I've been working on trying to figure out different jewelry options to sell in my shop. So those will show up sometime when I get them done. Works in progress. I only have one right now. I knew that shawl test knit was coming up and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have anything else too big to work on while I was doing it. And I also wanted to get the hat and booties done for my niece. And so those have been the things I've worked on. and. But then I had some health issues and so I didn't get as much work done as I wanted to anyway. My work in progress are fingerless mitts for my husband. Right now they are just kind of sitting on extra cable because <laughs> I set, started those before the others and I set them aside on whatever cables I happen to have. So these have a cable pattern that's going down. I'm doing top down. So this is the hand uh, like this is what it will be. It's very stretchy, so it should fit him. He's, he's tried it on. And I'm almost down to where I need to start doing the gusset for the thumb. So those have just been sitting, not being worked on for a while in my two at a time bag. I don't have any other works in progress. I do have a UFO up there, but I decided not to bring it down. And uh, I need to start working on it again, but I haven't. I do have something that I want to start working on, and I've, I've really wanted to have like a straw hat type thing, and I wanted to make my own because they just never fit very well. Uh, so they have the raffia kinds of things that you can get. But if you buy that 
the way it's made to be used for knitting. It is extremely expensive. I just didn't have it. And I was in the Dollar Tree, which is a store that sells things for a dollar. And in their craft section, they had this raffia in little strips. You can find raffia in those wow, rolled up string, you know, cable almost like things that are really wide. And I thought, well, I could untwist those and cut them down, but that would be so much work. Well, here, one dollar for three little balls of raffia that's in little strips. I kind of figured I can give this a try to crochet a hat with this. If it doesn't work, I'm out a whole dollar. It's not a big deal. That's what I have for works in progress right now. I will be making another shawl. That will be a future project. I, my sister is choosing the yarn and so I don't have that yet to be able to start. I will be making a jacket out of hopefully out of the yarn I dyed. So those are things in the future. I do have other future things I'm going to do, but for now, that's where I'm at. I hope you enjoyed my episode. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more. Put a like if that's what you want to do. I am so grateful that you are here to join me on my journey through the fiber arts. Thank you for watching. Bye.